You may have been showing this before, but this is one of my favorite things to teach. I've been teaching this for over 30 years. Let's go. So I want to talk about cording today, and I want to talk about the song Let It Be, which actually is hundreds of songs because this particular chord progression has been used over and over and over to write some of the biggest songs of all time. When people learn to play the acoustic guitar, the first thing they do is learn to play three or four chords. And guess what? As soon as you can play three or four chords, you're off to the races. You can play hundreds and hundreds of songs. So I'm going to basically show you many, many different strumming patterns, if you will, on the piano. Chording patterns that you can apply to any song. I'm just going to use the first part of Let It Be. The chord progression is C, G, A minor, and F. Beautiful thing is, even if you're just starting to play the piano, this is on all of the white notes, so it's a really great place to start. So it's C for two beats, G for two beats, A minor for two beats, and F for two beats, or one for two beats, five for two beats, six minor for two beats, or four for two beats. The way that I play this style of Beatles chording kind of goes like this. That's the basic chording pattern for Let It Be. The easiest way to get started on it, if you've never played this before, is to just go like this. Play the chord twice. G, A minor, F. When you're comfortable with that, you can try the Beatles 5-3-1 chording style, I've heard it called, or just the rocking back and forth Beatles style, which is the top two notes of the chord. to G, go down to G position and go up to A minor, down to F, just like that. Sounds awesome. If you're not comfortable playing, you'll notice that I play octaves in my left hand. I just like the way that they sound, but if you're not comfortable with that, just keep your left hand in F position. Just use single notes and those work just great too. Works perfect. You kind of have to get to know where these chords are and how they feel because often you're doing something like this. When you start rocking back and forth, you're starting with the top two notes of the chord, so they're not quite as easy to. C, because a lot of us think of the chords from their roots. So let's go a little deeper into this type of chord and I'm going to show you some other options and other things that you can do inside of this chord progression, C, G, A minor, and F, which will make it a little bit more interesting, give you some tricks to try in different songs. So one of the most powerful things that you can do is incorporate something called the suspended two chord. A lot of people just call it the sus2 chord, which looks like this. Here's a C major chord. A C sus2 looks like this. C, D, and G, or one, two, and five. And check this out. Ah, that's cool. So I was just using a major chord, C major, C sus2. G major, G sus2, A minor, A sus2, F major, F sus2, and just going between them, you can just do it as solid chords like this. Or you can do the 5 3 1 style of Beatles chording. Major, sus2. thrown in there on the end. So that's one way that you can do that in solid chording. If I wanted to take the sus2 trick and do it in broken chording, that works really good too. Now, you don't always want to do solid chording when you're playing behind a vocalist or playing in a band. Sometimes broken chording works brilliantly as well. So I'll give you an example of broken chording without the sus2 and then with the sus2. Here's a very simple example of broken chording with the let it be progression.
kind of sounds like Pachelbel's Canon. It's beautiful. A variation that you can do is you can do the major chord and then on the second time, sub in the sus2 chord. Works really, really well. I'm gonna take that one step further and I'm gonna complicate things just a little bit. I'm gonna show you how you can make a pattern in broken chording with the major chord and the sus2. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go C, C sus2, and then part of a C chord, just the first two notes. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a, that's how you count 16th notes. So this actual pattern is done in 16th notes. One E and a two E and a, that's the pattern right there. Just repeats itself over and over again. Works great. There's several other ways that you can chord through the Let It Be progression. One of the things that I love to do, which is really easy, um, that you can try is I just like to do static lines. I like to do static lines of chording where I'll pick something in C and I will force it over the entire progression. And it sounds really cool. So an example would be maybe something like this. I'm going to go with a C and a G. Just like that. Just those two notes from the C chord. This is so catchy. And by the way, as a studio musician, I've used those kind of licks on songs over and over again because they just sound good. They're just like little earworms that make you want to listen to the song over and over again. They're just catchy and there's a few different ways that you can do them. Another way that I'll do that one is I'll flip it and do an inverted fifth. And when I say inverted fifth, I'm just putting the fifth on the bottom. So C on the top, fifth on the bottom. Check this out. like that. Again, the secret weapon is incorporating the sus2 into any of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that lick and I'm going to do a variation where I go from the C to the sus2 note. Another static line that's really easy that you can do for chord is you can take this sus2 chord like this and just put a G on the bottom of it. Watch this. type of stuff is to practice slowly of course at first and just slowly build it up with a metronome if you have one works great just start really slow take your time and build it up while I'm on the topic of let it be in fifths I have to show you a great trick now this is what I call the fray trick because I often love listening to bands and figuring out what they're doing on the piano or on the keyboards and then trying to take that concept and incorporate it into my own plan. And I would encourage you to do the same. That's what it's all about. It's like learn as many of these patterns as you can and it's just tools in the toolbox that you can just use when you're playing chord progressions. So there's a song called You Found Me, I believe, by The Fray. It's a great song. And they do a style of chording which basically goes one, five, one. 
fifths are used all the time in pop music, pop piano chording. They're just really, really catchy. And this one kind of goes like this. The left hand plays first, and then the right hand plays. And it's an eighth note, so it's one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. So it's like this. singer who plays the keyboards in this band, The Fray, has this really cool trick that he does, at least I think he does from what I can hear, is he plays fifths in the left hand. So rather than just playing C, G, A, and F, he'll actually play a fifth like this. C with the G on top, G with the D on top, A with the E on top. He'll go like this. Something as simple as that can just be so, so catchy. It doesn't even have to be that complicated. Sometimes when you're quartering over a progression, you can just take a C chord and just play a C chord over the whole thing and it works beautifully. Sounds really, really catchy. Makes for a great intro, so you can put the fifths in there. It's really important to know what parts you're playing in a song. I always think to myself, what part am I playing in the course? What part am I playing in the verse? What part might I be playing in the bridge? And I will kind of have it mapped out. When you think of songs, think of them like energy. Songs build and they come down. So for instance, if I was playing an intro with an artist and it was the Let It Be progression, I might use this as my intro. Makes for a great intro, right? Simple. And then when the vocalist comes in, I might just go really simple. happens, boom, kind of lifts a little bit, might go like this. And then after the chorus happens, there might be a turnaround, which is very similar to the intro, it might come back to... as a bridge section or a solo section you want it to be big and exciting so you might do something like this and then at the end of the song it might come to an outro often outros are the same as intro so it might be just as simple as back to this at the end of the song to kind of bookends the song and ties everything together again. So that's an example of how you can take some of these chording patterns and ideas and organize them into a song that you're writing or into a song that you're playing with someone else. So practice some of these concepts with the Let It Be chord progression. Try them out. Try them on some other chord progressions. Get creative. Use them in different ways to build the song. Have fun. Make it your own.